Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another meal prep. I have a extremely busy week this coming week. I'm only going to be having lunch two times this week. The rest of the time we're going to be on the road at work and so we will probably be getting lunch out. Um, I've been getting off work kind of late lately and so I wanted to have my dinners prepped as well but I forgot to take some chicken out of the freezer so I only prepped one of my dinners. I also prepped a snack and then lunch for the two days this week that I need it and I also could use it also for a dinner if I needed to but I will be prepping my dinner um, my other dinner I'm going to have this week later in the week so I will definitely show you guys that if I end up recording that. Um, but I wanted to have some chia seed pudding but since I am fasting right now I decided to have that for a snack this week and then the lunches that I'm going to have this week is going to be some green chili enchiladas and then I'm going to prep my pizza stuffed peppers which I keep pushing off but finally finally got it together to make those. So for the chia seed pudding, you guys have seen me make a ton of chia seed puddings. I've been just kind of experimenting with some different recipes. Um, this one's going to be like a cherry pie uh, chia seed pudding. So we have our chia seeds, our almond milk, no sugar, cherry pie filling, some yogurt, almond extract, and some protein powder. First up, we're going to make our base here. So I have a quarter cup of chia seeds. This is going to make two chia seeds pudding. So we have a quarter cup of chia seeds. I'm gonna do one cup of the unsweetened original almond milk. And I'm just gonna kind of mix it up a little bit. And that's kind of the base of all of chia seed pudding. So it's like a quarter cup to one cup will make two servings. So it's like two tablespoons and a half a cup of almond milk is really what you need. It makes it just the perfect consistency. The almond extract, I like to use almond extract for anything that I want to kind of simulate a baked good. I really think almond extract kind of adds that flavor. And then I'm gonna do some protein powder now. I'm just gonna do one serving of protein powder. So for my particular protein powder here, it is two scoops is one serving. I just know from experimenting in the past that doing one full serving per one chia seed pudding was just too much. It just did not seem, it had a very good consistency. So we're just gonna do the two scoops, which is one serving of the protein powder for the two different um, chia seed puddings. So I'm gonna stir it up really well because the protein powder does tend to clump if you don't whisk it up really well. Now I'm gonna use some yogurt. You can use plain non-fat Greek yogurt. I like to use vanilla yogurt in this typically, but because I wanna make this kind of a cherry pie, I just thought I would use one container of the Too Good cherry, black cherry yogurt. So I'm gonna give that a good stir. And then um, after I whisk this up really well, we're just going to put this in the refrigerator and let it sit up. So mine sat in there for probably about an hour. So just the rest of the time that I was doing my meal prep, but you wanna let it sit in there at least 30 minutes. And if you notice that your chia seeds are just, it's not like congealing very well, then check the expiration date on your chia seeds because I did have that happen to me and I realized that my chia seeds were expired and that really does make a difference. So we're gonna go ahead and toss this in the refrigerator and you will see how thick that it gets. A serving of the no sugar added cherry pie filling is a third of a cup, so I put just a little bit in the bottom of this container and I'll put the rest of it on the top. And then I'm just going to try to do this as even as possible and just do half and half in each of the jars of the pudding. But you see how thick that gets and it'll thicken up even more as it sits in the refrigerator overnight. And then I'm just going to put the rest of the cherry pie filling on top just to kind of round it out. Now I will let you know for sure how this turns out. So far my favorite chia seed pudding has got to be the tropical one with the mango. But just, I don't know, just the cherry just sounded really good for some reason. I don't know. I love cherries. I actually tried to find some dried cherries to use in this instead of the cherry pie filling, but I could not find any. So ended up with this, and I thought this would be a good alternative. So this will be my snacks a couple days this week. Like I said, I'm intermittent fasting, and so I normally would have these for breakfast, but that's another reason why I wanted to make it kind of more dessert-like. So I'll have this after dinner a couple days this week and I will be sure to let you know what I think about it. Now I'm gonna make something I've made a few times before. So you guys have seen this before. This is green chili or salsa verde enchiladas. So we have some shredded chicken, 
some plain non-fat Greek yogurt, some pinto beans, the Trader Joe's Salsa Verde, which is my favorite hands down Salsa Verde. We have some seasonings. I'm gonna use the um, Carb Counter Zero um, Net Carb La Banterita Tortillas. We have our Fiesta Blend Cheese. Now, if you want this to be a little bit less points and calories, you can use the Reduced Fat Cheese. That's what I thought I got, but I think Walmart gave me the wrong one when I did my grocery pickup, so that's fine. We'll just take the calories and the points I was not going to, you know, worry about it. So I'm just adding a little bit of garlic paste. I just had a little bit left. And I'm also gonna add some salt, pepper, garlic from Kinder's. And I'm gonna give that a good start. Add a little bit of onion salt as well. Cause you guys know how much I love the Trader Joe's onion salt. And we're gonna stir that up. And you can use whatever kind of chicken you want. Um, you can use um, like, Ch uh, chicken strip chicken tenders. I'm trying to like what is that word? I'm thinking chicken tenders that's cut up use whatever you like I just like to use shredded chicken breast. That's my favorite in this recipe and then we are going to add in Some of the plain non-fat Greek yogurt now you can use sour cream instead But for me, I have been so used to using plain non-fat Greek yogurt in place of sour cream that I don't have an issue with the taste of it or anything, especially when it's cooked into things. I don't notice a big difference. So I just put that whole container in here, which I believe these containers are about five ounces. I really don't ever measure much on this recipe because there's really no points to this recipe except for when it comes to the tortillas and the cheese. The rest of it's zero points, but I did, you know, I try to keep track of the calories and the protein and whatnot. So. Um, it is like a 5.3 ounce container is what the yogurt is. And I'm just going to use, probably end up using about half of the Salsa Verde container. I'm just going to put some in here. Then you'll see we'll put some in the baking dishes as well. Now this does not look pretty at all, but it tastes so good. That Trader Joe's Salsa Verde, like I said, is hands down my favorite. But if you don't have a Trader Joe's next to you, like me, I only get up there a couple times a year. Um, the Herdes or Herd Herdes. Um, which you can find pretty much everywhere. They also have a really good salsa verde as well. So I do use that one whenever I can't get to Trader Joe's. So I'm just going to put a little bit in the bottom and that's just to keep the tortilla from sticking. And then we will add, I'm just going to use, so a serving of these tortillas is two tortillas. So we're going to use two. We're going to put one on the bottom and you can also use corn tortillas for these. I like the extra thin corn tortillas because I'm not a huge corn tortilla fan. So I like the extra thin ones just because they're not as um, thick, they're not as corn tortilla tasting, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I have not been able to find those for a very long time. And so I had these ones on hand because I was going to make tacos the other day, but I never got them made. So um, anyway, so we have um, our chicken, salsa verde um, chicken that I just kind of just putting some in each of the containers. I'm adding on the cheese. A serving of this cheese is a quarter cup. So I'll be using a quarter cup per baking dish. And I did weigh those out, actually. I just weigh them out in grams. And then I'm just going to use the rest of the chicken and put that on top. And then I'm going to finish it off with a little bit more salsa verde and then the rest of the cheese for each one of them. And like I said, it doesn't look pretty, but y'all, it tastes so good. And like I said, you can substitute um, sour cream. Another thing I was going to tell you you could use is cottage cheese. I haven't made the same recipe with cottage cheese, and but some people don't like cottage cheese. Um, but you guys know I love it. But I have made the same recipe using cottage cheese. And it, it has, actually, I, I almost like it a little bit better because you get kind of a cheesier taste to it. Um, but I only have just a little bit of cottage cheese on hand and I plan on making some dressing with it later on in the week. So these, um, oh yes, and then I'm going to add on pinto beans. So I do like to add just pinto beans on top of these just to add a little bit extra fiber and just, just a little bit more texture on there. I got these pinto beans at grocery outlet. I forgot to put them in my grocery order and so I saw them and these are, I will never buy them again. They were, most of them were all broken up. Um, it just, they were not good. Um, they tasted fine. I tasted them. They tasted fine, but they just did not look very good. So these are going to go into a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. And again, it's going to depend on your oven, how long they need to cook for. 
And here's what they look like after 15 minutes. Perfect. I'm going to put these the lids on them, put them in the refrigerator, and they will be great to reheat. These are a great meal prep. They reheat really well. They taste just as good if they were just fresh right out of the oven. I've had these pizza stuffed peppers on my menu for like three weeks now, so I finally am going to make them. Dinner is something I've been struggling with getting on the table because I have been working so much lately and getting off work late. So here we go. We'll have at least one dinner prep that I can have for two days, and then hopefully I can get another dinner prepped on Tuesday when I'm working a normal day. Um, but these are pizza stuffed peppers, so these are all the ingredients. First thing I'm going to do is I need to cut up all the peppers. So I just cut, I just chose the ones that have like the deepest, um, you know, to stuff them. And then I have um, the other half of the red bell pepper that I'm just going to go ahead and put with the meat. Now, if you're someone who likes mushrooms or olives, definitely add them to this recipe. Most of the recipes I saw for these did have mushrooms and olives, but you guys know I don't like cooked mushrooms and I don't like black olives. So... For me, not going to add them on there, but that is definitely an option. Highly recommend doing that if those are something that you love. Use whatever pizza flavors that you love. Now, I'm going to be using some 96% lean ground beef, so we're going to go ahead and get that cooked up. I added the peppers, added the onions, and then I'm just going to cook this through. We're going to add in some of that seasoning from Trader Joe's, that sofrita, I think is what it's called. Um, that stuff is a very strong, so definitely if you ever pick it up, which I do recommend that you pick it up, it's a fabulous seasoning. I've repurchased it twice now. Um, highly recommend it, but just be very, it's one of those seasonings that you don't want to add a whole bunch to because believe me, it is very strong. So I literally just kind of added just a pinch to it and that's all I'm going to add. And then I also am going to add some of the Kinder's salt, pepper, garlic to this, of course, because you guys know I put pretty much everything in this and everything. And then I'm also going to add some onion salt because, again, it's my favorite seasoning. Oh, and the Italian herbs. Um, so because this is kind of an Italian type thing, I wanted to add a little bit of Italian herbs to this. Um, but like I said, again, just be very careful with your seasoning. Just make sure you don't over-season, which I tend to do sometimes. Um, I thought I put the onion salt in there from Trader Joe's, but maybe I did not. I guess I did not. So we're just going to go ahead and stir that up. And then next thing I'm going to add is the pizza sauce. Now you guys know I'm super picky about my pizza sauce, but this Classico pizza sauce is one of my favorites. So I'm just going to pour some of that in there. Now you could add in just tomato sauce and add in, um, the seasonings, which that's what I normally do whenever I make any type of recipe like this, but because... I had that on hand, I went ahead and just used that. So I used about a quarter of the jar. Now, I, in hindsight, after I stuffed all these, I realized I should have weighed out the meat to come up with the actual, you know, but I was just trying to get my meal prep done. I got a little bit of a late start. But after I got them all stuffed, I realized I used about half of the mixture. And my plan is to eat two of these for each time I have them for dinner. And I'm just going to pair these with like a side salad. So I'm just going to put them in the um, tracker when I come up with the points and the calories and the protein and all that. I'm just going to say I used half of the pound of 96% lean ground beef for this because that's I really that's really kind of what was left over when I looked at it. Um, if anything, it's less than that, but we'll just have to go with half. And I think that's the I think that's the best way to do it. Next time though, I would definitely weigh it out. I should have done that, but like I said, didn't really think about it at the time. Now, my cheese, so I showed in the previous picture the reduced fat mozzarella cheese, but I noticed when I opened it, it had like this weird like wetness to it. <laughs> and I looked at the expiration date, it expired on June 1st. So I thought, nope, we're not going to um, use that. And then I had some provolone cheese in there, but it was moldy. So um, our power went out yesterday and was out for quite a bit. And I'm like thinking, is that when all this stuff happened? I don't know. But anyway, so I just used the Fiesta Blend cheese again for this because that's the only cheese I had left. Not really a pizza cheese, but you know what? It'll work. We just have to have cheese with our pizza. Um, so I did um, have 12 of the turkey pepperonis, which... 
I think 16 is a serving and 12 is what makes them like one or two points. And then I just cut them into those little pieces. Well, I had a lot of this turkey pepperoni left over. I did not use it all. So I'm just going to track, I think maybe eight pieces for the whole recipe. And next time I'll just cut them as I need to use them. But um, also something that would be really good for this, which I could not find, are those little mini pepperonis. That's what I would use next time, at just because I do really like those. But they're just hard to find in my area. Now, I'm not going to bake these. I'm going to wait till the day I have them for dinner. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them in the refrigerator. And then that way, at least this part is all done. When I get home from work, I can just pop these in the oven, bake them off. I'll put a little bit of water in there, but I will show you guys all that on the day that I do have this for dinner. I will film that so you can see. And like I said, I would have had one more recipe. I was gonna do my taco burgers, but my ground chicken was still frozen when I did my meal prep. So we're just gonna to have to end our meal prep with this, but I am so happy to get back into meal prepping again. It's just been so busy at work and it's gonna be nice to have a couple of snacks, my lunch, at least one dinner ready for me this week. I do have some really super easy dinners that I can just throw a bowl together as well. I have some meatballs, I have some brown rice, I have some veggies in the freezer, so I have some things that I can use. But thank you guys, as always, for taking time out of your day to watch my video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.